if you're interested in research methods, it's useful to know where you can learn more about what methods are actually used in your field and get at where to get advice if you're stuck with a problem. Of course, if you're taking a course, then it's a good idea to ask the course staff. But there are also other options available and you should familiarize yourself with these options already during the course. The first option that's available is that many academic organizations offer research methods training or have interest groups for research methods. I'm a member of the Academy of Management Research Methods Division and that's one great place to learn about, about different methodologies. This is the, uh, their website that contains some resources but more importantly these people organize trainings at, at conferences and they, you can participate if you're a member. So consider if you're a member of Academy of Management consider joining the Research Methods Division. Of course other academic organizations have similar interest groups or units or divisions or groups or whatever they're called. The, the Academic Management Research Methods Division also organizes uh, pre-conference workshops or professional development workshops. Here are some examples. For example, uh, there are these kind of sessions where you can meet people who know a lot about methods. This is, uh, for example, if you like the paper by Akunis and, and Vandenberg, then uh, you can go and see Bob Wanderberg and ask questions from him. You may also want to ask questions from these other people that are experts in methods or some fields of methods. So there are these open settings where people who know generally about methods come and you can talk to them. You can even take your paper with them or give a regression table to them and ask them what can, what can I do about this and then you get one-on-one -on -one feedback. So that's a very useful way, way of, of seeing people informally. These conferences also host a various uh, number of introductions to certain topics or workshops or short courses about topics. For example, uh, I like to teach outliers around uh, based on the article by Herman Aguinis and his uh, students. So they have been presenting this article of how to identify, define and handle outliers, uh, a half day workshop for multiple years. So if you want to know more about outliers or ask questions how you should deal with outliers in your research then this kind of workshop is, is very valuable. Of course there are tens of uh, other workshops as well that are equally high quality. Then outside conferences you may also want to uh, have a place to ask for help. You can of course use, uh, when, if you take a course then using the course form is a good idea but there are public forums that you can also ask. Here are some examples. SCMNet is a 25 year old email list that has a couple of thousand, I, if I remember correctly, it's 3,500 members that are either interested in methods to, so that they can learn more or are experts in methods, particularly structural ecosystem modeling, but also others. So you can post your questions if you have a data analytical question, like how do I interpret the chi-square statistic in structural ecosystem model? then you can post it there and you will certainly get lots of responses. You will find out that there are often multiple different perspectives on an issue and then uh, you will learn more and then you can make your own, own judgment on uh, which advice to follow. Even if your question is not related to structural ecosystem modeling, this is a big list of people, then you can ask like what's the best place to ask questions about R and somebody on the list will know. Then we have uh, the Academy of Management Research Methods Division list. That's a bit smaller. That's a few hundred people, maybe a uh, thousand people. And the questions are less specific to data analysis problems, but they are more about research design. Like you're, you're, you have a problem of whether you want to, uh, whether you should include a control or not. That's a good place to ask. Then if you are interested in uh, learning about particular software, Software typically has some forms. For example, uh, Stata has a Stata list at org and people with all levels of expertise in Stata ask questions there like you could ask how do I get started or you could say ask my multi-level model doesn't converge. Here is the output. What should I do? And there will be people who are uh, willing to answer your questions. So there are many places on the internet that you can ask these questions because the email lists are fairly large it, it guarantees that there is some amount of, of self-censoring. So if someone is going to answer your question and they know that it's going to go to uh, thousands of their colleagues, they want to be sure that their email response is well written and correct. 
and that's a good thing for you if you ask questions. Then it's also possible take, to take courses. I recommend uh, also looking outside your own department. One of the best courses that I have taken was in the psychology department and that really uh, taught me a lot of things and also when you when you learn methods for other applications then it gives you a, a, a broader picture of what you can do with them in your own field as well. Then uh, there are also online courses. I recommend Coursera but one problem with online courses is that basically uh, anyone with a microphone can record online video and put a, a price tag on it and post it on some services. So some of these services that are available online are not very high quality. They rely on just having large amount of students to take a course for free and the course may not be any good. The problem is that if you're just looking at the course you may not know. So beware of, I call these scams because some of these courses are taught by people uh, who may not know the, um, the subject area as well as they should. So when you're looking at uh, whether to take an online course there are two things to, that you, could, you should look at. First uh, is the, uh, the person an expert. So if you are taking an econometrics course then uh, if it's run by an econometrics professor then it's probably a, a better course than if it's run by a marketing professor. This is of course another bulletproof uh, criteria and there are some really good marketing professors out there. But looking at whether the, uh, the specialty of the person is the, is the thing that they're teaching is a good indication. Another uh, that you can think that you can look at is whether it's branded by a university. So if a course is branded by a university instead of being branded uh, as a person teaching a course online then that gives some credibility to the course because universities don't want anyone to be teaching uh, incorrect things using their brand. I recommend particularly the, uh, the Duke University courses on Coursera. Uh, data analysis and statistical inference is a great course. They use R and they cover the basics and then they go more advanced to regression model. They don't really cover research design as much as they cover the basics of statistics but that's that's a really really valuable course. It's one of the most highly rated, highly rated uh, massive online courses ever. Then uh, another nice way of learning about things is to do examples online. University of California Los Angeles Statistics Department has these uh, data analysis examples. This is their old website so the new website is a bit different but the idea is that uh, they have uh, a list of, of different statistical analysis that you could apply for data and they have different web pages for different statistical software. They have Stata they have SAS which is a, a bit older software that uh, I can't recommend anymore. Then there is a uh, SPSS that I don't recommend although it's commonly used. There's M plus which is a specialized package for shock regression modeling and there's R. So you can compare how a particular analysis would be executed in these five different software packages and also uh, these websites tell you uh, how you interpret the results when you would apply the analysis. So that's that's quite useful. They have lots of examples from textbook. For example, they are, I think the prestige data is that I used in a different video is analyzed in one of these examples. Then uh, it's always a good idea to read books and if you want to learn about statistical analysis methods instead of uh, finding a book that says something about everything you should find the best book about the particular method that you want to use. Here are some of my favorites. For regression analysis I, I like Woolridge's introduction in econometrics and Cohen's regression book is a classic as well although I think a proper econometrics book is better than Cohen's book. Then uh, if you want to do logistic regression analysis then uh, Horsman and Lemon Show uh, is a classic. So uh, Stanley Lemon Show is also teaching a course on logistic regression analysis on Coursera using Stata so you can follow that course and for mixed effect regression analysis Sophie Rabe has sketched book on multi-level and longitudinal model using Stata is a great uh, applied book and if you want to do surveys there are a couple of books that I recommend. So depending on what you want to do find the best book about the particular design. Let's assume that you want to do uh, a survey project where you send out questionnaires with multiple index scales and uh, multiple indicator scales and you want to analyze them with factor analysis and you want to analyze the, uh, the scale scores with regression analysis. 
So what you do is that you find a book about survey sampling groves, you find a book about survey instrumentation by Dillman, you find a book about uh, measurement of factor analysis, for example, Develis is a great book, and then you find a book about, uh, about uh, regression analysis. You study those books while you do your project and uh, you will learn as you do. Yet another good, great resource is uh, research methods journals. So you probably follow some journals uh, that are deal with the topic of your study, but there are also journals that are about research methods and these fall into two broad categories. The first category is technical research methods journals that are focused on the development of new, new uh, techniques and you will know these journals based because you can't understand what they're talking about. So these are mathematical journals that present simulation studies and things like that that are meant for people who develop analysis techniques for others. So they are not really for applied research. Then there's the other category applied research methods journals such as organizational research methods and psychological methods that are primarily aimed for, for researchers who are interested in applying techniques to their field. For example, the uh, organizational research methods uh, editor statement says that it's, uh, it's meant for advancing uh, the understanding of research methods and the current practice of research methods in the field of management. And psychological methods is the same, but it's for psychologists. These journals are meant for researchers who have a PhD done using quantitative techniques. So it's, it's not uh, the best place to learn the basics, but once you learn the basics, following uh, one of these research methods journals is a good way of keeping up with what's going on in the field and what are the best, latest and greatest things that you could apply. There are one nice way of, of following these journals is that many journals uh, present their articles as an RSS feed. So it's, it's here. You can Google a bit more about these RSS feeds, but the idea is that this link provides uh, a list of, of articles that the journal publishes and you can use an RSS reader software to subscribe to this link. And then uh, once you have subscribed every time this, article pu this journal publishes new articles, you will be notified and you will get the abstract and uh, the title and the authors and then you can decide whether you want to read it or not. So here is my uh, RSS feeder. I use Feedly, which is an online software. I log in and I, in, I click on those RSS links and I subscribe them to Feedly. And this is uh, my academic feed, all my journal articles. I also follow some others and I fo follow some 20, 30 different journals. I, I change this uh, quite frequently. So I know what's going on uh, around the topics that I study and around the methods that I use. So this is a great way, the RSS reader, to keep up with your field and you should subscribe to also some research methods journal. If, if nothing else, subscribe to organizational research methods. And as a disclaimer, I'm on the editorial board. Then you should work with more experienced people. So your supervisor is a great resource if he or she knows uh, about quantitative techniques. Also some other colleagues could be good resources for you. If you have a data analysis problem, it may be a good idea to ask somebody who is more experienced than you to become a co-author to help you with the analysis. And if you have a good idea, then people tend to agree with this kind of requests. Then you can also ask your supervisor if you're a very beginner, if he or she has data sets that would need to be analyzed and that you can practice with. Then at some point you start your own super own project. So for me, when I was starting doing a learning research methods, I started by reading a book and I understood basically nothing from the book and I wasn't motivated to read the book at all. I did a project. I, I decided that I, I will do a survey study. I did the study and then I applied structural ecosystem modeling because I, I saw that other people applied that as well. Then uh, I did something, I got some results. I submitted the paper to a conference. I got the review comments back and then uh, the reviewer comments said that the author really doesn't seem to understand what he's doing. And the reviewer of course was right because I was just applying method by looking at what others had done with the same method and without really knowing what I was doing. But the good thing was that uh, then that, uh, that little project really motivated me by indicating 
what things I should know that I did not. And then I started studying about those particular things and eventually building up my competence. So, so working on data sets uh, while at the same time studying, at least that's how it what worked for me as well. I mentioned the psychology department course uh, about structural ecosystem modeling. That's the best one that I have taken. Uh, in that course, I was all the time applying the techniques that they taught in the class on my own data set. Uh, the nights after the course and in the mornings I could ask the instructor some questions uh, that are like how do I apply this technique to my data? What does this statistic or this result mean in the context of my data? Also, if you want, if you're going to be investing a lot of effort in data collection, plan well ahead because uh, your, the quality of your study is mostly determined by how well you sample and do you measure the right things and do you measure the things correctly. If you omit, for example, a control variable in a survey study, it's nearly impossible to collect it afterwards. So planning a lot before actually doing is, is a good advice if you want to uh, do high quality research without uh, redoing a lot. Then finally, there are uh, two kinds of answers to all scientific questions. Sometimes somebody tells you that uh, you don't need to care about heteroscedasticity, you don't need to care about this thing or that thing, just apply this technique and you're going to be fine in all situations. Such simple answers are unfortunately uh, not, not often right. Sometimes we have a complex problem and the complex problem requires a complex solution. So you have to actually go and study, but then uh, studying things will, will produce better research and it'll make you, uh, it'll, it's also more motivating for your, you when you know that, uh, that you can trust your results.